Hi class, welcome to Module 6, Video 1 of Music Appreciation Online, The Romantic Era. After completing this module, students will correctly define terms related to the Romantic Era, art song, nationalism, program symphony, through composed form, dies irae, virtuoso, nocturne, leitmotif, rubato, etude, polonaise, verismo, song cycle, absolute music, symphonic poem, romance, Concert Overture, Ide Fis, Chromatic Harmony, Exoticism, and Program Music. After completing this module, students will correctly name significant composers of the Romantic Era and list their contributions. Franz Schubert, Robert Schumann, Clara Schumann, Frederick Chopin, Franz Liszt, Felix Mendelssohn, Hector Berlioz, Frederick Smetana, Peter Tchaikovsky, Johannes Brahms, Giuseppe Verdi, Giacomo Puccini, and Richard Wagner. After completing this section, students will correctly identify from oral examples the music of Romantic Era composers. See test review number five for the listening list. The 19th century was characterized by Romanticism, a cultural movement defined by individuality, emotion, and imagination. In art, music, and literature, there was a trend towards freedom of expression. Whereas 18th century artists were beholden to aristocrats, 19th century artists created works for themselves and their audience. There was a fascination with supernatural, things that could not be explained. And artists were inspired by nature and depicted many natural scenes in their work. Although Romanticism involved romantic love, the larger concept of Romanticism is borrowed from the Middle Ages when romance involved a literary form descriptive of larger-than-life heroes or legendary figures. In music, composers continued to use traditional forms but infused them with a sense of individual style, a trend that Beethoven started. As the political climate of Europe continued to shift, many countries were ruled by occupying forces. Citizens in these places rebelled by creating a sense of national unity. Nationalism, or pride in one's country, led composers to infuse their music with elements from their homeland, such as folk songs, dance styles, or legends. Other composers were inspired by faraway lands and wrote music that reflected those places. Exoticism was a trend where composers would use folk songs, dance styles, or legends from a foreign land to paint a musical portrait of a particular place. During the 19th century, there was a strong connection between music and literature. Composers began writing pieces that were descriptive, often based on a story, poem, idea, or scene. This practice led to the concept of union of arts, the idea that all of the arts are interconnected. Composers started writing for larger orchestras as they wanted a wider range of sounds. Performers were expected to have a very high level of mastery and were often expected to play to the extremes of their ranges. More color was added to the orchestra in most sections. Woodwinds, like English horn, bass clarinet, and contrabassoon were added, as were brass instruments, such as the cornet, now with valves, and the tuba. Trombones were regularly added to the orchestra. More percussion included various cymbals, triangle, bells, chimes, and numerous ethnic instruments like castanets. So the dynamic range expanded with the orchestra from double pianissimo to double fortissimo was common. Changes in mood demanded changes of tempo as well. Rubato, or sudden changes in tempo, became common. Composers experimented with chromatic harmony, chords that are not found in the tonic key or scale. These chords would intensify the resolution of dissonance and make the music less predictable. A variety of genres were used as personal expression required completely different forms. Everything from short piano works, like those by Schumann or Chopin, to the operas of Wagner, some of which were five hours long, became possible. And, inspired by Beethoven, composers became free artists who wrote to fulfill their inner need as well as to entertain audiences. Because there was a growing middle class, there was more demand for music. More orchestras and opera companies were formed, and music conservatories offered places for people to study music. Most composers could not survive on the sale of their works alone, so most supplemented income by teaching music, performing, and occasionally writing music critiques. And, due to the technical demands of the music, the 19th century was a time of virtuoso musicians. 
A virtuoso is a performer who has attained the highest level of technical and musical skill on their instrument. In other words, they had no limitations as to the difficulty of the music. With few exceptions, most of the composers of the Romantic era were virtuosos. There were several new genres that evolved during the 19th century. One of the most popular was the art song, which is defined as a song for solo voice and piano. The piano becomes an important partner and usually helps to set the mood with an introduction. Art songs were based on poems that were prevalent at the time. Many of these songs were written by German-speaking composers like Schubert, Schumann, and Brahms. Many of the poems were written by Heinrich Hein and Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. So the German name for song is commonly used, Lied for one song, Lieder for a group of songs. The melodies were crafted to enhance the text and portray the emotions of the poem. There were three typical methods for setting the text to music. Strophic form uses the same melodic idea for every stanza of the poem, although it may be slightly varied. Through composed form means that there is different melodic material for each stanza of text. Then a hybrid of the two, modified strophic, would typically feature two stanzas written to the same melody, while the third was a contrast. Many times composers would write collections or sets of songs that were unified by a topic or storyline. These are now known as song cycles. While there were many composers who wrote art songs, the most prolific was Franz Schubert, the Viennese master. Schubert composed over 600 art songs, but he also composed in most of the other genres as well. He was a contemporary of Beethoven and no doubt was influenced by him. Schubert never really mastered an instrument or held a court post. Nevertheless, he is one of the first to make a living solely from the sale of his music. He was influenced by the classical style, but his music featured much more chromatic harmony. Our example is Errol Koenig, one of Schubert's best-known and beloved songs. It is based on a poem by Goethe, which according to scholars, Schubert read at the age of 17. He was so moved by the story that he wrote this song in the course of one evening, not something most 17-year-old kids could do. The poem is based on the legend of the Elf King, Errol Koenig in German who was a legendary character of the spiritual realm. The Elf King's intent was to torment young children, and in this poem we discover he goes way beyond torment. There are several characters, a father and his young boy, the Elf King, and the narrator. The narrator tells of the father and boy riding through the woods on a dark and stormy night. The boy falls ill and becomes feverish. He starts to hallucinate and cries out to his father asking if he has seen the Elf King. The father keeps making excuses, trying to calm the boy. In the meantime, the elf king tries to entice the boy over to his side of the spiritual world. By the time the father and his boy arrive home, the boy has died from his illness. We are led to believe the elf king was responsible. As you listen to this piece on Connect, think about what Schubert did in the music to make the poem come to life. Pay close attention to the sections where the boy cries, My father, my father. How did Schubert intensify the emotion of the poem? Our next few composers were all brilliant pianists, beginning with Robert Schumann, one of the most lyrical of all romantic composers. Much of his music was programmatic and autobiographical, and though he was successful at selling his works, he had to supplement his income by becoming a music critic. He founded the New Journal of Music and wrote articles about many of the up-and-coming composers around Europe, including Brahms, Chopin, and Berlioz. He eventually married his piano teacher's daughter, Clara Wieck, and they had a happy life together, including seven children. Most of Schumann's music was organized into sets or cycles and include mainly short piano works and art songs. Schumann did compose in many other genres, including symphonies, concertos, and chamber music. Schumann began studying music at an early age and was encouraged by his father to write music. After his father passed away, however, his mother insisted he pursue a more lucrative career. She sent Robert to Leipzig, Germany to study law in hopes he would become a successful attorney. While in Leipzig, Schumann learned about Friedrich Wieck, who was a well-known piano pedagogue. After several attempts, Robert convinced his mother to let him pursue a career in music. 
After studying with Herr Wieck for a while, it appeared Robert was talented enough to become a concert pianist. But an injury to the middle finger of his right hand forced him to stop playing. In a letter to his mother, he said, I don't need that hand to compose with. Our two examples are both from a set of short piano works by Schumann titled Carnival. It is intended to evoke the scenes and characters one might see at a fair. There are 21 short pieces in the cycle, several of which are based on characters from traditional Italian street theater, better known as Commedia dell'arte, comedy of craft. Other pieces in the set were inspired by his relationship with Ernestine von Fricken, a young woman he was engaged to before he met and fell in love with Clara Wieck. He used the letters in the name of Ernestine's hometown, Ash, Germany. You can read more about this in the background section for these pieces on the Connect website. Listen to Estrella and Reconnaissance on the Connect site. As I mentioned earlier, Robert Schumann married his piano teacher's daughter, Clara Wieck. Clara was a child prodigy of the piano and became one of the leading virtuosos of Europe. She was influenced by her husband Robert and was an accomplished composer in her own right. She wrote art songs, solo piano pieces, and romances. A romance is a short lyrical work for solo piano or solo instrument with piano accompaniment. Clara wrote several of these pieces for solo violin and piano. Of course, she did all of this while raising seven children with Robert. After Robert began writing about music, the Schumanns were visited by Johannes Brahms, who was looking to further his career with a positive critique from Robert. Both Schumanns were impressed with Brahms' work, and the three became close friends. After Robert Schumann passed away, Brahms came to live with Clara and helped raise her children. You can read more about Clara in your textbook. Our example is one of the romances Clara composed for solo piano. The romance in E-flat minor is a delicate work filled with typical romantic expression. Listen at the Connect site. Our next composer is Frederick Chopin. No doubt many of you have heard his music even if you did not know what you were listening to. Chopin was born to a French father and Polish mother in Warsaw, Poland. He maintained a strong Polish national identity throughout his life, though he had a French surname. Chopin was unusual in that he only wrote music for solo piano or piano with orchestra. His friends called him the poet of the piano because his music was so lyrical. He was influenced by the music and dances of Poland, in particular the Polonaise and the Mazurka, two Polish dances. Chopin's music is often very ornamental and he uses a lot of very colorful harmony. His music is quite challenging and has become a main part of most every pianist repertoire. We have three examples by Chopin. I recommend that you hear them all, but only the Nocturne in E-flat is on your list of pieces to know for test five. First, Nocturne is French for night piece. These pieces are usually very subdued and peaceful, but not without some exciting moments. The Nocturne in E-flat major is one of Chopin's best known works. It has appeared in quite a few movies and TV shows and was used at the beginning of a movie called Bad Santa. No, really it was. The second piece is an etude, which is a study piece. Etudes are intended to help a performer master certain techniques. All instruments have etudes written for them. The etude in C minor was written shortly after Russia occupied Poland in the early 1830s. Some historians have suggested that Chopin wrote this as an expression of his anger over his homeland being invaded. As an etude, it is designed to help the pianist with the strength and endurance of the left hand. The musical quality of Chopin's etudes is such that they are now commonly performed as concert pieces, not just for practice. Finally, there is the Polonaise, which was originally a dance intended as a processional for Polish nobility. It has a regal character and is written in triple meter. Of course, Chopin's polonaises are not for dancing. They are strictly listening entertainment. You can read more about these works and hear them at the Connect Kamian website. I have also included links on iCollege to YouTube videos featuring wonderful performances of all of these works. You can see these pieces performed and witness the incredible skill required to play these works. The next composer we'll study is Franz Liszt, a Hungarian-born piano virtuoso who was a child prodigy. He had the opportunity to study in Vienna where he met Schubert and Beethoven. As a teenager, he was inspired by the mastery of violin virtuoso Niccolo Paganini. 
whom he heard in a concert. Liszt vowed to become the Paganini of the piano. He stopped touring and practiced 10 to 12 hours a day for a time. He developed a technique unmatched by no more than a handful of pianists. Liszt composed for the piano as well, writing some very difficult etudes and other works. In his mid-thirties, Liszt decided to settle down and took a job as court conductor in Weimar, Germany, one of the many towns Bach had worked in. He began composing works for orchestra and is credited with inventing the symphonic poem, a single-movement programmatic piece for the orchestra featuring literary subjects and thematic transformation. Later in his life, Liszt decided to enter the church and studied to become a priest. Though he never became a full-fledged priest, he did serve as an abbey and was known as Abbe Liszt. The musical example we'll hear is from Liszt's set of very challenging pieces called the Transcendental Etudes. The concept is that the pianist should transcend or go beyond their perceived skill level. The Transcendental Etude number 10 in F minor is a technical and musical tour de force. Liszt expects the pianist to use a variety of difficult techniques that he developed, including hand crossing. You can hear this piece on the Connect site, but I recommend you watch the YouTube video available in the links section of iCollege. 